The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Money Radio staff, management, or advertisers, and do not represent an offer to buy or sell any securities. Some interviews heard on this program may be sponsored by the participants. It's time for Health Futures with Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. This is Arizona's only show dedicated to providing you with expert advice on how to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. To learn more, call 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Bob Roth. Good afternoon. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you, and I'm your host, Bob Roth, and it must be Friday, and indeed it is. It is Friday, March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day out there to everybody out there. Uh, I think everyone's Irish today, so uh, enjoy the day, but be very safe. So we're coming at you live from the Money Radio Studios in the Scottsdale Air Park at 1510 AM, 105.3 FM, and the World Wide Web, moneyradio1510.com. If this is the first time you've tuned into our show, our show is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. How do they do that? They tune in here to Health Futures on Money Radio. And it's not to listen to me. It's to listen to these extraordinary guests that I have in the studio. And one in particular is here today, first time here on Health Futures. Welcome to Health Futures, Rebecca Duffy. She is the Clinical Director for Evolved MD. Welcome to Health Futures. Thank you so much, Bob. I'm so glad to be here. It's good to have you here. And, and you know, your company is doing something very innovative, and it is addressing a need that is permeating through our society, and certainly one that is permeating even more so now that we're hopefully on the other side of this pandemic. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, I, as I talk about addressing the need, it's the behavioral health, mental health needs of our community. And, you know, just before the pandemic, it was one in five, and now it's one in four. 26% of our population, adults that are 18 or older, have a mental health illness. Yeah, affected by a mental health illness and are, are reporting that for themselves, right? So that's self reported data. Right. And, and they're reporting it, and there are many others that have it, and they aren't they reporting don't report it. it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, we're talking about 26% of our population has a mental health illness, and, and used to ca- it used to accompany with a stigma, mm-hmm. but not so much anymore. I mean, I think our society has become more accepting of that. I think we're more aware. I don't know on a regular basis if we're more accepting, and I say that because, as you said, that 26%, the likelihood is that percentage is probably very low because of the cultural needs and the things that we follow in society to not report something. Right. And I think we also are not always fully educated on what is happening in the world and how we're reacting to it. And is that a appropriately, are you appropriately handling that? So, you know, there's been a lot of change in the last few years. And just alone, there's a mental health diagnosis adjustment disorder. I have for about a whole year told everyone everybody it on planet earth after COVID is going through an adjustment disorder right because your whole life has changed mm-hmm. and even if today you're thinking no like i don't have to wear masks anymore or i don't have to do this or you know wipe down my groceries you now know that that is possible that there is something that could happen and you know you had to isolate and you had to, there was a lot of steps that we were not familiar with right. and that's a reality now No doubt, no doubt. And, you know, I throw out that number 26%, and that's a recent study that was done by Johns Hopkins. But, you know, when you really sit down and you think about it, that number is low. Mm -hmm. And it's low because you and I know there are a lot of people that are self-medicating themselves. Absolutely. And and alcoholism has been a real big problem, as as well as some of the recreational drugs that people are using or, or even prescription drugs that they're using that are abusing those. Absolutely. Those numbers have have also increased, right, as you mentioned. And, you know, uh, self-soothing items became very high when we didn't have to leave our house for a year, right? Right. Um, You know, I I know that it was people joked about it, but the reality is alcoholism shot up in that time. And it also wasn't reported accurately because 
people didn't people had shame around it. They had shame around it, but you know, if you look at those Wall Street companies, you know, mm -hmm. Anheuser Busch and other companies did really well. Right. So the proof is in the pudding. Yes. Right? <laughs> they were <laughs> the selling a lot pudding. of alcohol. Right. Absolutely. No doubt. No doubt. But I, I'm just really glad to have you here in the studio, and and I know that Evolved MD is is a startup. Quote unquote. I mean, you you shared with me your five years in existence. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to take our listeners through the rest of our first segment about Evolved MD, how it came to be, who were the founders, and where are you now? I love it. I would love the opportunity to do that. So, our founders, we have co CEOs, Eric Oslin and Steve Bilgen. Um, Eric went through something in his own personal life that prompted this need to say, Where has the behavioral health chain been? as one of his family members was ill, um, where is the help? And essentially what that prompted was doing some research and saying, you know, 67% of people that complete suicide, sadly, have seen their primary care provider within 30 days. Wow, so, 67%? Right, so what we know is that in the United States of America, even though we are more aware, the de facto doctor is still your PCP. Right. Right. People are still going and saying, I don't feel well. Now, if they can't make sense of that, those next steps are taking place. Um, so, you know, those are staggering statistics. So Eric and Steve, along with some of their other employees, really took stock in the fact that it is not OK to have people go into a PCP office and not have somebody there to do the mental health treatment. And that's what Evolved MD does. So they did not invent the model per se, but we expanded on it. So the University of Washington at the Eam Center, they had created this model called the Psychiatric Collaborative Care Model. And what this really does, Bob, is it brings in the PCP, the mental health therapist, and a psychiatrist hmm. to be on a team and make sure that the needs are wrapped around. Now, what's great is I think we all understand why that's so important for the people that are abusing it, but for the people that really need it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and within the model at Evolved MD, we've also brought in a care coordination team, mm. which, you know, I worked in community mental health for a very long time. And one of the things that becomes difficult is making all the phone calls, scheduling, checking insurance. That's really a lot on the therapist. So um, Steve and Eric brought in this care coordination team to do that part. So they are constantly for the therapist, scheduling, rescheduling, checking insurance, doing all of that red tape. And they'll even check in with the closest facility that matches all of those things so they you know take your insurance etc they'll call you on a three-way call and say i have this location available for a referral mm -hmm. if it's a if you know there's a need at a different expertise and make that appointment for you right then and there so we see a patient all the way to the end no i i, I like that um you know the care coordination piece is a really big piece mm -hmm. i mean it's one thing to you know you know go to see a doctor and and you know, they, they, you know, they diagnose and then basically say adios, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we need people to f help follow through and, and make people accountable. And it sounds like that's what Evolve MD is doing. Yes, exactly. And I think we do that on the care coordination piece, which is amazing, right? Because as, um, I, like, I'm a single mother. If somebody can help me schedule an appointment and I don't have to call my insurance 50 times, you're doing me a huge right. service. Right. But the other thing that really drew me to Evolve MD myself is, the phrase, we don't forget, we follow. So if a patient comes in and they need a higher level of therapeutic care than what our therapists can give them at that time, we will still check in with them on a monthly basis. Hmm. See how they're doing, check in on their screenings, etc. Coming from community mental health, I worked with tons of teenagers in a substance abuse program. Hmm. When they needed a higher level of care, I would refer them to that higher level of care and I would never see them again. And that really creates a burnout system with your clinicians. It was sad to think. Right. I built rapport with this child, this teenager, and I don't know if they're alive or dead today. Right, right. Well, you know, in, in really describing Evolved MD, I, I want to talk about in our second segment, what does that really look like? You know, how, you know, because radio is a vis visualization medium, right? So mm -hmm. I want to be able to visualize what that engagement might look like. I'd love to. James. You got a little Irish music for us for St. Paddy's Day. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock in You. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and I've got Rebecca Duffy here in the studio. She is with Evolved MD. We're one segment down. We got three more to go. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hmm. 
Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. We're in our second segment here, and if you're just tuning in, I have got Rebecca Duffy here in the studio with me. She's the clinical director for Evolved MD. They are a healthcare practice uh, specializing in mental or behavioral health. And if you missed that first segment, we covered a lot in that segment. And I urge you to go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button, the button just below its radio show. You'll catch this one and about 500 others that we've been bringing to you for the last 10 years. So, Rebecca, when we broke, I told you I, I, I really, you know, radio is a medium where you, you can paint a really good picture for visualization by mm-hmm. our audience and for me. Sure. So, I, you know, we talked about the pandemic. We talked about how this adjustment phase that we're all going through. We talked about the fact that, you know, one in four, 26% mm-hmm. of those that are 18 and older have a mental health in, illness. And, and those are the ones that have reported it. Right. Uh, we surmise that there's many more that have been self-medicating for some time. Yes. So here we are going to our primary care physician. What does that look like? Great. So I'll, I'll take it from here, Bob. So you will go into your primary care physician and they will um, administer two mental health screenings, one that is looking for depression and one that is looking for anxiety. For those of you that are familiar, it's the PHQ-9 and the GAD-7, short screenings. If those come back positive per se, meaning that there's a high enough number to indicate that you have some sort of depression or anxiety, or if a doctor who has known you, maybe your primary care has known you for 15 years, and they see a change in you, or they know that you've just gone through a recent loss, body language, whatever they're seeing, they don't even have to make a referral to our mental health therapist. They literally can go in and say, and say to, well, they can go in to say to the patient, I really think this would be good care for you. I think it's important to give this a shot. I think it also, um, the doctors will say, I think it's also important to note that mental health and physical health are very much intertwined. And your A1C because of your diabetes or your blood pressure, like this may also be some things we, that we need to work through emotionally. Um, so they will recommend it. And as the patient is leaving, they will be scheduled. And what's nice is the doctor doesn't have to send a referral. His um, assistant can just go in and schedule that person right then and there. So there's no wait time between Mm. getting scheduled with a licensed mental health professional. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the barriers when you're in clinic as well um, that, that most people will see. So, you know, there's the time factor. Like I said, you're going to leave that day with an appointment to see a mental health therapist. No more than two to three weeks out, usually within seven days, though. That's our average. Wow. Right. I mean, for uh, those of us that are making doctor's appointments, especially for specialists. Right. You know, they're, they're telling us four, six, eight weeks out. I mean. And what's incredible in our model is we have a built-in psychiatrist that's reviewing the charts. Nice. So they are going to make me- uh, medicine or prescription recommendations right over to your PCP. So therefore, if you needed to go and see a psychiatrist, that's built in. Nice. They'll make those recommendations to your PCP, and the PCP can go ahead and prescribe them. Secondly, um, this patient, and I'm going to continue on their journey, but these barriers are really important, I think, to discuss. And the second barrier is stigma. We do still see some stigma attached to, especially in the male population, between the ages of 20 and 35. They don't want to have a therapist. With this, you're going to see your doctor. Nobody ever has to know any different. Mm -hmm. So we remove that barrier of stigma and then cost. Most of the time, unless you have a very high deductible plan with your insurance, it costs you the same copay to see our therapist as it does your doctor because we are billing out medical codes, not mental health codes. So we're able to offer, say if your copay is $25, you're gonna go in and see a licensed mental health professional for $25. So, you know, we really are removing the bar- the barriers of time, stigma, cost. We're trying our best to get mental health to everyone that needs it, right? That 26% plus that is sitting in our community struggling at some points. Um, so with that patient, they will leave. They will then come in and see our behavioral health manager. We call them behavioral health managers because for that clinic, they are handling all of the mental health needs. Uh, the behavioral health manager will then go ahead and do an assessment and make a treatment plan right along right along with their patient. 
And then um, if needs come up, we are able to, in within office, with the provider, the PCP, we're able to collaborate right then and there. So quick question. Sure. You're meeting with the behavioral health manager, BHM, you probably call it. That's we're, right. We're, we're big on acronyms in so healthcare. Are we, yes. So um, you're meeting with them in their place, or are you meeting them in the primary care physician's you're place? You're meeting with them right in your primary care physician's office. So if I were to go there today, mm-hmm. um, I could meet with my PCP and be back before next Friday. You got or, it. You know, so I will schedule something within the next seven days mm-hmm. to come back to have an evaluation done and seek therapy. Right. And and there's even days where if the wow. PHM is not within an appointment at that time, the PCP will just walk you right over and meet your new therapist right then and there. So, you know, it's it's that same having the both of them in the same building really eliminates barriers, but it also is much easier to build rapport because a lot of us trust our PCP if we've been with them for a while and they say, this other person is great. She or he is right across the hallway. Let's get you in for an assessment. It just makes sense. Oh, it does. And, and it makes it so easy. Mm-hmm. It really does. Now, yeah. kudos for the way you guys really built this thing out. I love it. I take so much pride in our company. I'm very protective of that that story. It's, I think it's incredible. So, so Arizona-based? Yes. And you got one HQ here and how many locations? You're in PCP practices and in, uh, obviously, integrated medical buildings and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So we have the one headquarters um, just outside of Old Town Scottsdale. And then we are in, uh, in Arizona, we're in over 50 different clinics. We have some large partners in the Valley. We're also um, continuing to grow in the state of Utah and moving into Colorado and New Mexico. Tell me a little bit about some of the partnerships you have here in and AC. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Yep. Um, so we currently are partnering with Honor Health Facilities, IMS Facilities, Optum Facilities. We have some independent family clinics that we partner with, and I'm sure I'm missing a few of them. But, um, you know, we continue to grow our partnerships because it's, it's really a no-brainer. Well, you know, for me, it, you know, and I, and I use the word integrated medicine, and, mm-hmm. and I think that's where we're at right now as a society. I mean, it's the mind, body, and spirit, right? Absolutely. So, so it's not just physical health. And, I mean, all of us, all of us always think of seeing our PCP for physical health, right? Right. You know, I got a, a, a sore throat or, you know, my, you know I, I, my knee's not working right. Whatever yeah. your issue is, you're going to see your PCP, but we never think about the the whole mind piece and right. the spiritual piece, which is really connected into the behavioral mental health piece. Absolutely. Somatic symptoms, physical somatic symptoms, meaning that you are f- playing out emotion physically, are very, very real. Mm-hmm. Um, we all have a person in our life where they've said, well, yeah, I went in for this pain in my stomach and they can't diagnose anything. Well, you know, we need to look at another set of right. of understanding there because if, a, if your PCP, rightfully so, has done all of that testing, they don't see anything. Do we need to process out some childhood trauma that you've been storing for 25 years? Right. You know, I mean, if you've ever been at any kind of therapeutic appointment and you discover something or you process something or you let something go, it is like taking, you know, 100 pounds off of your shoulders. It's a very amazing feeling, but you don't recognize how much you're carrying around until you're in a safe therapeutic space to share that. Mm. You know, therapy is very real, and that emotional toll that we're all going through is very real, and mm-hmm. we need relief in that. Oh, we do. So, and that's why collaborating with the, the provider right then and there, being in, you know, we call them hallway consultations sometimes. Our doctors are very busy. However, we can sit with them for a few minutes and say, you know, I'm seeing improvement in this patient's um, handling of their diabetes, and we're working through their trauma and their depression around, you know, this being their lifelong diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Are we seeing improvement in their numbers? And the doctor comes in and discusses that as well, right? The other part of it is, you know, sometimes we downplay our own self-reporting. Well, with this team of your provider and your mental health therapist, they can talk and collaborate and say, she's reporting she's feeling better, but her blood pressure is double what it was last time. Or You know what I mean? So right. you're seeing... This collaboration mm. and, and coming at it from a team approach. So, yes, mental health and physical health coming into play in, in one meeting. Data. Yeah. I mean, the data really tells us everything. And, you know, we're not so sure, you know, if we're getting someone that's being very thoughtful and honest. Mm-hmm. And, and really, we 
need to go back to looking at the data. Right. You know, you said in the first segment, you talked about adjustment period, right? Is, mm-hmm. that, is that what you defined Ad- it as? Adjustment disorder? Dis- adjustment disorder. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that, that adjustment disorder is something that, I don't know if it's a phrase that you coined or is it something that's coined in the behavioral health community? It's, yeah. it's an actual DSM-5 diagnosis. It's in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. You actually go through an adjustment disorder. Yeah. And, and you labeled that as part of this pandemic because we've all gone through this. I mean, the fact is, is that we've all experienced loss. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be loss of a loved one. It's a loss of a job, a loss of a career, a loss of, you know, just your innocence. Your, yeah. Yeah. All this and stuff. That, you know, I, Bob, I really appreciate you bringing up grief because I think oftentimes we think grief is only the loss of a human or an animal, things like that. The reality is we can grieve our freedom Yeah. that we lost our freedom to, you know, be able to go out and do X, Y, and Z in our community. We can grieve the fact that we were so naive then and now we have this knowledge and I don't like that knowledge. That doesn't feel good to me. Right. You know, I even look at it as like my family's in Washington State. I didn't see them for almost a year and a half. You know, it's lost time. So grief is not just I lost someone or something. It is a process and you lose innocence. That's that's grieving. Well, I, I want to pick up more on this when sure. we come back in the second half. You know, you talk about loss. My father was counting the days that he was in prison, meaning his home, because mm-hmm. he was so vulnerable to anything happening to them. Right. It was and over a year. Well, we're at halftime here at yes. Health Futures, and I'm pleased to have Rebecca Duffy here in the studio, Evolved MD. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock in You. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and we're in our second half here. And James, I love the tunes. Gets us really upbeat for the (laughs) weekend. I mean, St. Patty's Day. I mean, come on. A little ACDC. No better way to start it. For sure. For sure. If you're just tuning in, I've got Rebecca Duffy here in the studio with me. She is with Evolved MD, and they are a very different practice than anything you've ever seen before. Really helping a lot of these primary care physician practices really um, be a resource to their patients. And, and it's in the behavioral health vertical. And, you know, we talked about the fact that, you know, one in four, 26% of those that are 18 and older have a mental health illness. And they need solutions and they need help and and i will tell you evolved md if you missed the first half go out to our website at cypresshomecare.com click on the media button just below that is radio show you'll hear that first half but they've done a lot to really help break down the barriers of the stigma break down the barriers for access as it relates to cost i mean i you guys have thought a lot about a, a lot of different things to make this type of therapy and this type of resource available to people in our community. Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, thank you, Bob, for for rehashing that out because I think it's important to think of all generations within this model as well, right? So, you know, I I know just speaking on my own behalf, um, my mom and dad would not be apt to research and call a therapist at this point, but if their PCP said, it's 45 minutes, go give it a shot. You know, 40 minutes with a therapist, let's give... Let's give it a shot. Let's see how it affects you. Maybe it will improve something. And you're meeting at their practice. Right, right then and there. You're not having to go somewhere else. Right. And so I think it it becomes less scary. Right. You know, to some of our older population, therapy can still be a little bit intimidating. And it's not something they believe in. We'll hear that. I don't believe in therapy. You just give it a shot. It's really nice to be in a room with somebody that can't judge you, has no understanding of you prior to that appointment or after. And you just get to tell them how you're feeling. (laughs) Well, it's interesting, too, is I learned from you a a new billing code, a new diagnosis, Mm -hmm. if you would, called adjustment disorder. And and I know that that's been around probably for a while, but it's been elevated because of the pandemic. And and you're seeing a lot of people going through this right now. Absolutely. I think, you know, one of the 
saddest and hardest parts um, for many of the pandemic was feeling lonely and isolated. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, especially in our older population. Um, And and these folks are adjusting how they are going to feel connected and they're adjusting what they're doing on a day-to-day basis and how that looks and how that feels. And, you know, it, it comes down to that old adage of, you can do it, but you don't have to like it, you know, and we all adjusted quite a few things that I, I didn't like it, but I knew it was the right thing to do. And so an adjustment disorder is really looking at how did you have to kind of change your routine, change your life. And if you didn't like that, or you're angry about it, or, you know, in some instances, maybe it, it was helpful, but Mm -hmm. that adjustment still needs to be taken into account. Like we as human beings like routine. I know a lot of us say, oh, I'm just back to my routine, but we crave it on some on some stability level, and that changed, and and it it's hard. No doubt, no doubt. I I, I know our listeners know my dad because I've talked about him. He's been here on the show with me. I I lost him four months ago. It will be tomorrow. Mm. Um, you know, he talked about how he was. He, he referred to being home because he had so many comorbidities, he referred to it as being in jail. Right. And he, he would count off the days, and it was literally almost 400 days where he was home, and the mm-hmm. only time he ever went out was to go to a doctor's office. And this is somebody that is extremely social. He and his wife, you know, she has since passed too, and, and she and his, he and his wife, they were very social. They were always going out to restaurants, going to shows, and right. just being out, and, and now, they were stuck at home, mm-hmm. and as it related to ideologies, they were on opposing sides, and we know how contentious the 2000 election was, Yes, and that just made things even worse. Right, right. There was, <laughs> if you think about what was happening to us just internally, and going through this adjustment, and how our home life had to change, and then you think about all the things that were going on in the community around us, but in the greater community. Yeah. It was very rough. And I think, too, crazy. you are not at your best when you have sat home for 400 days. You know, I, I've been saying this the last few weeks. I can't be trusted at this time in my life because I have a lot going on. Think if you've been home as a very extroverted couple for 400 days. 400 days. You're not who you were before. You're a very different human being. And that's that's okay. You're dealing with it. But you come out of it now. You cannot say you have not changed. No doubt. And you, you have to be able to process that a little bit. And, and, you know, you think about these people that were home. I mean, just the fear-mongering, too. I mean, you know, we've learned so much about the pandemic since it. But, I mean, the fact that our president was having every single day a press conference that mm-hmm. would sometimes, le- you know, last two hours. Mm-hmm. And everybody was tuning into it. And none of the information was really positive. Right. You're not yeah. leaving that feeling any bit better right. and significantly worse. I used to tell my dad and my stepmom, I used to tell others, just turn off the turn news, off the turn yeah. off the TV. Right. It just is, it's, it's not good for you. No, no. And it, it was scary already, right. right? So I think, and I think also at certain points, COVID became a contentious thing to talk about as well, right? Because some people that were on that fear-mongering side was like, we can't do this, we can't do this. Other people, it was like, those fear-mongering people would potentially look at others thinking you're breaking the rules, you're the problem. So, I mean, it, it just, it was too much. There were fights at Costco right. and Walmart over toilet paper. Yes. I'm like, really? I can't, can't believe we, we, we resorted to that. Right, but and we sure did, nationwide. Yes, it wasn't just here. No. What, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about this forever, I'm right. sure. It'll be in the history books. You know, um, I want to take this moment, Rebecca, and really learn a little bit about you and, and mm-hmm. how you came into this profession and how you got connected to Evolved. And, mm. you know, we've learned a lot about Evolved MD, but I really would like you to take some time to really tell us a little bit about you. I'll start off by saying, are you from here? No. And I still call my home state home. I'm from the state of Washington. Okay. I grew up about 20, 25 minutes north of Seattle. I got my bachelor's degree right on the Canadian border. Side note, you can drink when you're 19 in Canada, and that was back when you didn't need a whole lot of paperwork to cross the border. Nice. So I definitely learned some life lessons at that point. Um, And I just went through a couple of traumas in my adult life. I lost two very good friends within five years. Um, One of them passed when we were 19, very tragic car accident. And um, 
my group of friends just really came together. It was like my high school group of friends. Mm -hmm. We came back from school and we all wrapped around each other. And that kind of same thing happened again when we were 24. Um, accidental overdose on that one. Oh and, no. you know, I just got to a place where I had to, I needed to have another kind of release. So my plan was to go ahead and move to Arizona. Two of my very best friends in the world had already moved here. So I knew I wouldn't be totally starting over. I'd have some supports. I'd go get my master's degree and then I'd move back home, Washington. Instead, I got married, <laughs> <laughs> had a baby. So I now have a six and a half year old. And you got your master's. I got my master's, yeah. Uh, got a divorce, but now I have a career and a group of friends and, and amazing people around me. So I've stayed. I go visit my family often. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I became an LPC. That's a licensed professional counselor. Mm -hmm. So I'm an independently licensed therapist. I could, you know, get a very pretty sign and hang it anywhere I want and do therapy according to the board of behavioral health rules all by myself. So that's exciting. It takes some work, got through that portion of my career. Did you actually do that? I, did. You uh, I have only had a side business private practice okay. and I currently have, um, I do clinical supervision for young therapists on the side of working at Evolve, nice. but I may have burnt myself out in community mental health. I worked at one organization for one month shy of 12 years. Wow. Um, and, and so now, you know, in the nonprofit sector, and that is really, really tough lift. It um, is. But it, it really opens your eyes to what's going on in the community. And, absolutely. And, you know, we, especially here in Scottsdale, have no idea. No. <laughs> I we, mean, have, we have no idea. And, you know, I, I will tell you, I had a quality health here just a couple weeks ago. Oh, and great. And, you know, just lifespan, the lifespan difference between let's talk about Scottsdale and South Phoenix is 14 right. years. Yeah, and it does. That 14 years is so staggering. And yet, as you mentioned, with my background and my experience actually doesn't shock me. Um, I, you know, I was working with what we would consider, I mean, all of Maricopa County, but um, these are, you know, low SES patients coming in, mm. really needing as much support as they can get. Um, but with that I met two of my coworkers that are now at Evolved MD. The first one has been a mentor to me my entire career, Sarah Hanchett. Steve and Eric um, hired her first. So Steve and Eric came to her with the idea and she was the clinician on board and she was the first one to do She's any employee type of number one. Yes. She um, she was the first person to do any kind of therapeutic work within Evolved MD. She really grew the therapeutic side of the practices. Wow. Right. What? How many employees are you up to now? Uh, very close to 100. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, we're growing. I mean, growing into Colorado right now as we speak. So, What, what you have created, or should I say the founders created, is, is a, a resource that is to take down the barriers and make it accessible to everybody through primary care physicians. Yes, that is the goal. That is the hope. It is eliminating those barriers so more people will access the care that they deserve. And if you can just, before we end this third segment, mm -hmm. the relationship between Evolved MD and the physician, what, what, is, what, what does that look like? I mean, obviously, you're, a, you're billing the, the, the primary care codes, or are they yes. billing that? No, um, they actually, we make a collaborative agreement with and, and sign a contract with our partners. Okay. And the rendering provider, so the PCP, actually bills out our codes. So it is a medical code not a mental health code Got and it. that is how we are able to reduce the cost it is not like we're cheating the system no it was three codes that came in um you know a, a little over the five years ago that really made this possible and so it takes the ability to collaborate around care well what's interesting is you know you talk about 25 dollars versus you know my card i think seeing a specialist is 150 dollars yeah so I'm saving myself $125. You'll never know how many people when I worked in community mental health would say, I don't go to therapy because I can't afford it. Right. Yeah. Well, we got a little who taking us out in the third segment. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock, and you. I'm your host, Bob Roth. We're down three segments. We got one more to go. Stick around. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. A little who bringing us in a fourth segment. 
little Bob O'Reilly, right, James? Nice. <laughs> really, really nice. If you're just tuning in, I have got Rebecca Duffy here in the studio with me. She is the clinical director for Evolved MD. And I'm not going to recap all the stuff we talked about because we talked about a lot of stuff <laughs> and a lot of really good stuff. So I want you to go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button. The button just below its radio show, you'll catch this one and many, many more. And you'll learn a lot more about Evolved MD, more than what we're going to talk about here in our fourth segment. So I really want to talk about, you know, um, you know, certainly the stigma that surrounds mental health and behavioral health. And, and you, you know, helped me with a new diagnosis term called adjustment disorder. And, you know, I've shared here with our listeners about my dad, who has been a actually a guest here on the show multiple times, but also shared with the, the listeners here about his passing. And, you know, my father was a very, very, um, how should I put it? He, he was a post-depression baby, mm -hmm. and he worked not 9 to 5, but 5 to 9, mm -hmm. 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., because mm -hmm. uh, that's what he knew. Mm -hmm. And w he was a very strong personality um, and very much somebody that really felt like therapy and a psychiatrist were for those that were crazy not for him right seriously Absolutely. I mean that's what he really believed and and you know he lost his wife his second wife and that was really the love of his life and really he never really recovered from that mm -hmm. and she died unexpectedly she got a diagnosis mm -hmm. at the end of January and literally 50 days later he counted the days not only the days that he was in jail right. in jail if you missed our third segment, was when he was at home because we were going through the pandemic and he was told to stay at home by his doctors. Mm -hmm. um, that was really hard. But, you know, seriously, when he lost his wife, that was, it will be two years ago this Sunday, I don't think he really grieved. And I don't think he could really get through that. I mean, he passed in November. And he passed of congestive heart failure, but he really died of a broken heart. And that was really, really hard for him. And even though we had hospice for Maddie, his loved one, mm -hmm. um, he didn't really think about getting help until about six or eight months after her passing mm -hmm. and t tapped into Hospice of the Valley. Mm -hmm. And Hospice of the Valley, um, you know, all right, I'm giving him a plug. Yeah. <laughs> but they had a grief counseling program. And um, he started seeing a grief counselor to really help him through it and work through it. And then when he started having some other challenges, uh, he actually saw you know, therapy with a psychiatrist, too, which was not normal for him. Right. But, you know, at, at first, you know, he was reluctant, but he said, I'll try it. And then he liked it and he kept going back. So, you know, my dad, who was so strong mm -hmm. and physically, mentally, I uh, never thought that, you know, Behavioral health was something that he, it would be for him. Mm -hmm. He thought it would be for those that were, you know, had a screw loose. Sure. And, you know, for him, he sought relief and, and he really got it. And he kept going. Yeah, which he tells did. Me he, that a he man did keep that, going. Oh, absolutely. Understanding, understood that there was some type of relief. And I, I really appreciate you sharing with your dad. And I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. And you too. I, Thank you, you. You just lost your father. So we are part of the same club. Yes, and I don't like and Lauren club. over here is too. And I mean, you know, it's really hard, especially at being a dad without a dad. I can't imagine that portion. Yeah, it's really hard. Um, I, I think what we have in common, unfortunately, and what we know is grief is extreme and it is very tricky. I can't imagine, you know, as we've spoken about the losses of our fathers and how hard that has been. Can you imagine losing the love of your life, right? And how yeah. hard that would be when you're already grieving potentially your own health and well-being and right. the things that are changing around you. And so I think it's it's really important to just recognize that if you're not sure, giving it a try is the angle to go at. And I love the fact that I can look at you and say, I'm going to make it easier for you, Bob, to give it a try. Just try it out. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. Right. But there is another form of relief. You know, grief is, is it's very tricky and it's very intense. 
And, you know, I'd never felt anything like this. No. So to have any relief to go in and talk to somebody about that is very helpful for me right. every day. I mean, granted, I'm a therapist, so I'm a true believer in the therapy component. Right. But, you know, for your dad, he, he sought care that he wasn't actually very interested in, and it kind of worked. Well, it did work. Right. It, it, it did work. I mean, he still cried. But, yeah. I mean, and, and I will tell you, my entire life, the only time I did ever see him cry was when he lost his mom. Mm. And I never really saw him cry. He was right. always strong. He was right. so stoic. But, uh, you know, grief can cripple you. It can really bring you to your knees. Right. And he needed to talk to somebody. And it was not me. Right. He right. That's the other thing is that population was very much, well, I'll just talk to you about it. No, you need somebody that doesn't judge you and know what really happened. And you got to get stuff off your shoulders, whether it's through grief or any kind of processing. There's a lot going on in the world. We live very busy, full lives. So we have about 30 or 45 seconds left here in the show. I want to have you leave with our listeners with some thoughts, maybe a question I haven't asked um, that really conclude the show. And I do want to give our listeners your website, Evolved MD, E-V-O-L-V-E-D-M-D.com or look up Evolved MD on LinkedIn and yes. link into them. But please. I think I'll leave you with a thought here, Bob. And I think the thought that I'll leave you with is really everyone deserves to live a fulfilled life. And mental health does tap into your physical health, but it's also part of who you are and who you show up as. And and at the end of the day, nobody knows what that internal dialogue is actually saying to you. And if you're feeling like, I'm feeling a little rough, give therapy a try. Go in and, and talk to somebody about the thoughts that you don't like to have. I love it. Rebecca Duffy, Evolved MD, Clinical Director, Thank you for coming Thank and joining you. us here on Health Futures. I've learned a lot here today. I appreciated the opportunity. Make Thank it a great so day. Much. Have a great weekend. We will be back Happy next Saint Friday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. no place like home you've been listening to bob roth's health futures if you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care call cypress home care solutions at 602-264-8009 that's 602-264-8009 or visit cypresshomecare.com be sure to join health futures with bob roth every friday at noon right here on Money Radio 1510 and 105.3 FM.